Hi, my name is Lucas. I'm very happy to be part of this Congress of the International Economic Association and to be able to share with you my research on the task model of jobs and retirement patterns. As many of you are already aware, uh, many developed countries are facing uh, an aging of the workforce and there has been uh, substantial efforts to try to extend the working lives of individuals. Now, for this, for this effort to be successful, we need to understand uh, the context in which aging takes place and how, in this case, technological change affected the worker prospects of uh, older workers. In particular, do we need to understand whether technological change was an opportunity or a challenge for these workers. And this is precisely what uh, my research will try to show. So what we're going to do uh, I will study labor supply decisions of workers who are close to the retirement age, uh, that is, workers who are aged between 50 and 65 uh, years old. As particularly, I will try to answer the question whether workers in more routine occupations, uh, understood as those occupations that have a larger, larger share of tasks that can be automated and therefore are more prone to disappear, whether these workers uh, retire earlier. And for this, I will use uh, individual longitudinal data for two countries, Germany uh, and uh, Great Britain. Now, if we try to get our ideas in place, uh, there are two potential theories to look at. The first one is from a traditional human capital approach, which lets us believe that all the workers uh, will have more difficulties in coping with the new labor market uh, reality, so with the changes in the demand for tasks. This could be, for example, because older workers have fewer incentives to uh, invest in acquiring the skills that producing this task requires. So, for example, they might be less prone to learn a new programming uh, tool than younger workers. Not only that, but they will be less likely, they might be less likely to receive training from the employers. On the other hand, we also know that these older workers um, are relatively more concentrated in more routine occupations when we compare them to younger, so they might be more likely to end up in an employment because of the automation of tasks, and they might be they might be find it more difficult to find employment in the growing uh, sector. That is, it might be more difficult for them to reallocate. So this this paints a rather uh, green picture. On the other side, uh, there are reasons to believe that. Uh, it doesn't have to be the case, right? So first occupations are not necessarily monolithic constructs and it might not be the case that all workers in non-routine jobs benefit the same from, uh, from the development of new technologies. If that were the case, then we need to understand uh, where this heterogeneity comes from and whether there is an age component to it. If there is, then it might be the case that older workers in non-routine jobs are actually uh, worse off because they face competition from younger workers who are better able to uh, work with the newest technologies. Now, there is also a positive side uh, in the sense that new technologies uh, allow to automate certain tasks, uh, particularly uh, monotonous tasks, tasks where we lack uh, discretion, but also they reduce the need for uh, physical stamina. Now, by automating this task, the New technologies might convert the workplace into a place that it is more friendly towards older workers. In fact, all what, what we have here is that all these tasks were already associated with, uh, with early retirement. So perhaps by automating this task, we are actually uh, extending the professional life of workers. Now, to, to test our, my, main, my main hypothesis, I'm going to use uh, two different sources of data. The first one is the ONET uh, Occupation Network, which provides information on the task content of jobs. I follow here HMOGLU and Outdoor, and this is a very standard procedure. Uh, I derive my routine task intensity index, uh, which is the sum of routine minus the non-routine tasks. And again, this is standardized, so we can always read it as one standard deviation and what is the effect that it has on the probability of employment. Now, uh, this is uh, not the first time that American data is applied to analysis in Europe, and I am following here something that is well established in the literature. So, besides the ONET, 
I also work with European uh, longitudinal surveys. I use two of them, the socioeconomic panel and the British Household Panel Survey, and I use the period on which they overlap, which is uh, between 1991 and 2008. I restrict the sample uh, to workers that I observed uh, as being employed at least one, so I, once, so I would have information on the task content of shops. Now, what happens at, at around the time of retirement? So, what you can see here are age coefficients from added on the composition, uh, which includes also uh, fixed effects for cohorts and assumes that fixed effects for years are orthogonal to a time trend. Now, what we see here is that uh, Germany and Great Britain follow paths that were completely opposite, right? In the case of Germany, we see uh, an increase in the non routine content of job for employees who are above the age of 55, whereas in the case of Great Britain, the routine content increase. Now, one could argue, of course, that these estimates are not very precisely estimated, and the confidence intervals are rather large. In the case of Germany, the story seems to be consistent with what we have seen uh, from the traditional human capital approach, in that uh, more workers from more routine occupations Lead the, leave the workforce earlier. Of course, it could also be the case that there is a switch from uh, routine to non-routine type of occupations. So to try to uh, separate these two explanations, uh, people hoping into non-routine jobs before retiring and people retiring altogether, I use uh, transition matrices. And this is what it is shown here. So if we look at the rows, we have uh, RTI, which is uh, divided by different quartiles. And on the columns, we have uh, the starting age. So the first cell, uh, 50, Q, 50 Q1, tells me that the probability that a person age 50 will be non-employed non when they are turned 55. And they work if they work in the more routine occupation, it's around 10 percentage points. And what you see for Germany is that there is a huge uh, difference between those who work in the less routine occupations and the rest of the workers. And this difference is around uh, 10 percentage points. In the case of Great Britain, we do not see uh, much action going on. Right? The, 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 the point estimates are very similar. Uh, if we move, instead of consider people age 50, we look at people age 55 or people age 60, uh, a similar uh, pattern emerges. Uh, those who were in the less routine occupations are more likely to remain active in the labor market. In the case of Great Britain, again, we do not seem to find uh, much of a relation between the task content and the probability of remaining employed uh, five years later. Of course, this could all be um, because of the relation between the task content and education or labor market commitment. So I will try to use some regressions to try to separate these two effects. In particular, I'm going to study uh, a discrete uh, time survival model, where on my left-hand side I have the probability of retiring at age A, conditional on being working till age A. Now, the probability of retiring here at age, uh, actually tau, uh, is defined as we no longer observe uh, any employment spell for this individual. Of course, we allow for the possibility of some uh, spells to be censored. Right? So some people might not retire in our sample. On the right hand side, uh, our main variable is the task content of jobs. This is our RTI. And I'm using uh, RTI lag by five to avoid uh, potential jumps or transition jobs just before retirement. I also include a series of time varying controls. Uh, the first are job characteristics like firm size, uh, wage, and so on. The second are occupation uh, fix, uh, so occupation characteristics, like for example, whether this occupation is dangerous, uh, whether uh, it requires physical stamina, whether it is boring, and so on. These data are taken from the ISSP and independently for the two countries. And again, correspond to the same job uh, or to the job that the person had in T minus five. Finally, we include personal uh, characteristics like marital status, self-reported self health status, 
age and year fixed effects. Now let's move uh, directly to the main uh, results. Uh, so what we have here is a reminder that beta is our coefficient of interest and if beta is greater than zero workers in routine occupation uh, retire sooner. So these are the main results. Uh, you can see the, a clear split between Germany and Great Britain. Uh, in the case of Germany, our variable for the task content of jobs is always uh, positive and statistically significant. And when we add the most demanding specification, it uh, leads to a 1% uh, increase in the probability of being retired. That is the average marginal effect that you see at the very bottom. You can see that in the case of Great Britain, uh, point estimates are smaller, especially once we control for personal characteristics and by occupational characteristics, and these point estimates are not statistically significant. Everything results in average marginal effects, which are uh, close, uh, close to zero. So, uh, in addition to this, I, I run a few uh, robustness checks, which are right here as extensions. Uh, the first one is uh, consider whether we have what, what would happen if we consider an alternative reference job. So instead of looking five years back, let's look at the, just the last job. And this has an advantage in that uh, I can use a larger sample, but at the same time I, I get a little bit uh, worried over uh, transitions to routine jobs where the worker already has in mind uh, retiring. So you have this type, type of stepping stones argument. And what we found uh, is that in the case of Great Britain, nothing changes. In the case of Germany, our point estimates uh, remain statistically significant and overall are uh, larger. That is, uh, if you were working on routine occupation the previous year, you're more likely to retire in the next. Then I explore uh, time heterogeneity. And the reason being that during the sample period, there have been some changes uh, into the uh, retirement paths in, in both countries. So I try to see if this might have affected uh, the relation between the task content and the probability of being retired. And what I found is that in the case of Germany, point estimates are overall uh, in the same range. So for three sub periods, it doesn't move much. And in the case of Great Britain, uh, again, show, showing how uh, inconsistent the results are, uh, they estimate they estimates alternate signs. Uh, finally, I split the population in three groups uh, to see if there is a, a period that it is critical and the point estimates were uh, largest for workers who are 60 to 64, that is uh, just, uh, just a few years away from the uh, full pension retirement age. So, so to conclude, uh, I asked first whether workers in routine occupations retire sooner and my answer would be uh, a sound maybe. Why? Because my point estimates were statistically significant and they tend to point in the direction that it is uh, expected from the human capital approach, but the coefficients are relatively small. So we can move from the least to the most routine occupations and it would be around six percentage points uh, more likely to retire sooner. Right? Uh, moreover, the relation appears to be mediated by the labor market institutions and this is what we can see is that this is stronger in Germany, the link, and somehow weaker in Great Britain, which would be consistent with uh, the existence of more generous pension schemes in Germany and more flexible uh, retirement uh, paths. So with this, uh, I, I finish my presentations. Thank you for being there. If you have any questions, please uh, do not hesitate and send me an email at elvanderwelde.grape.org.pl. So thank you very much. And